Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Rume Paulson. How are you doing? It's Monday the 26th of August 2024. It is also known as Women's Equality Day. So a day for women to just celebrate themselves and make sure that you have a seat on the table. So regardless of your gender, um, you can also perform. You also have that capability and that's what equality is about. Showing that everybody's capable of anything and of everything and just making sure that whatever is fair for the man is also fair for the woman so for both genders and let's be fair to each other that's that's equality so happy women's equality day to all of the women out there keep breaking those barriers keep pushing those boundaries and keep keeping the, the best version of yourself all right, on today's breakfast show, we'll be looking at several hot topics, one of which DSS detention of justice um, sparks freedom concerns. Another says Supreme Court affirms elections of Bielsa, Emo, and Kogi governors. We'll also be taking global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies this morning, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day to set the tone. Hold on to your dreams of a better life and stay committed to striving to realize it. And that is by Earl G. Graves Sr. He was an American entrepreneur, a publisher, a philanthropist, and a businessman. And he says this morning, hold on to your dreams of a better life and stay committed to striving and to realize it. So that dream, that beautiful dream, that goal that you have, that aspiration, make sure you keep holding on to it i think this course is a no-brainer um of course you want a better life for yourself so keep striving to realize it is one thing to say i want this big beautiful life but it's another to ensure that you're executing all of the plans to get that big beautiful life to realize that beautiful life so hold on to your dreams of a better life and do not stop um, when it comes to, you know, having to realize it. No matter how big the dream is, it just starts with one small step. It starts with, you know, minimizing the goals and say, okay, you know what, we'll start here and then we just keep working our way up. So um, all you have to do this morning is believe that you can achieve that dream of yours. Do not give up. Mm -hmm. I know that a lot of times with the economy and stuff, um, you tend to give up and you say, no, I cannot do this, but you can. All you have to do is start from where you are. So hold on to that dream of a better life and do not stop when it comes to realizing it. Keep striving for it and you will be thriving at the end of the day. So do not give up this morning as you, you set um, yourself for your week. Make sure that you have this mindset with you that I can do anything I choose um, to do. Anything I put my mind to, I would be able to achieve it. And that big, beautiful, that better life, you will be able to achieve it as well. All right, that's it for our, our quote of the day. We'll move over to some top trending story. Well, this one says, Serap demands transparency on Chinese loans from governors and Wiki. The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project has asked the 36 state governors and the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Yentam Wiki, to disclose details of any Chinese loans, liabilities, and other external borrowing obtained and guaranteed by the federal government. In a statement on Sunday by its deputy director, Kolawali Oluwadari, the organization also asked the governors to reveal the debt restructuring terms and conditions for any such borrowing, including the provisions on collateral. It also urged the governors to clarify any investment agreements with the Chinese companies and repayment histories of any loans, liabilities, and facilities obtained from China and other external creditors. 
the statement read in court, we are concerned that your state and the federal, F well, the federal capital territory may have failed to efficiently manage your debt obligations, especially your external debts and investment obligations as guaranteed by the federal government. The failure to uphold your obligations is contrary to Section 6 of the Debt, Man of the debt Management Office Establishment ETC um, Act and creates financial risk and other exposure to Nigeria with respect to these Chinese loans, liabilities, and other external borrowing. Serap also made a reference to the significant risk associated with confiscation of Nigerian assets in foreign jurisdiction by multilateral and bilateral agencies and other creditors in cases of failure by your state and the federal capital territory to satisfactorily observe and fulfill the terms and conditions of the Chinese loans, liabilities and other external borrowing which are guaranteed by the federal government. It issued a seven-day ultimatum to governors to disclose the spending details of the Chinese loans, investments, obligations, and external borrowing or risk a court action. I think this is a no-brainer, and we're always happy that there is an agency or, um, you know, there's someone who's doing something um, regarding when it comes to transparency with the government. And that's what Serap has always been pushing for, transparency and accountability. And I think it's only fair that we know what you use the money for or we even know the history how much are we how much are we owing, owing how much have we borrowed so far um what have the money is being used for what projects i mean if you've if you're borrowing money you should be borrowing money for something it's not just borrowing money to buy 160 million our suv buy a yacht buy a jet or just splurge it should be oh we're borrowing this money because we feel like we need it and we can put it to good use now now, if you have done that and you know there's no skeleton in your cupboard, then obviously you should be able to show us. You should be accountable. That's what transparency is all about. And if we're trying to build a trust between the Nigerian government and the Nigerian people, it starts from here. And I know we keep talking about this, you know, all of the time because Sarah keeps, um, you know, saying things or, you know, giving these kind of actions that we need you to be accountable. And I don't think it's, we, we even need to stop anytime soon. That is what we have to demand. And I think the people of Nigeria also need to demand for, for this. It shouldn't just be Sarah. It shouldn't just be a civil society organization. It should be everybody asking. We should write letters. We should give out memos. We should let them know that we are interested in the business of Nigeria. So if Nigeria is going to be borrowing money, let us know what the money is about. I mean, um, we've seen the cases of um, the Chinese company that, you know, seized some of our assets in Paris. Um, you know, another jet was seized in Canada. So we're seeing all of these things being seized because we don't even, and most people do not even understand, we're only getting a whiff of it right now because now it has come to light. But if we already know, then we can even easily prepare ourselves. Aside that, I think as a nation, for other people or other nations or companies to be seizing your assets is quite embarrassing. How did we get to the point whereby we're owing or, in fact, some people are calling it a scam deal? with Nigeria, um, all over social media, some other people in other countries are saying, oh, apparently the Nigerian government tried to scam a Chinese company, and probably that's not the case. But how can we even defend our nation when we do not know the details of this particular loan, how it was being used, what has transpired in totality of it, so we need that transparency. We need that accountability. And I think the only reason why um, you wouldn't want to be accountable is because you might be corrupt. So you know that there are skeletons in your cupboard. You know that you've manufactured some figures and you're like, oh, I do not want these people to know. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to hide this information. But if you're doing the right thing, I don't think you would want to hide the information. And that is why the mindset of the leaders need to be you know, true. You need to be going there as a transformational leader that I'm coming here to serve my country. I'm coming here to serve my people. I'm not coming here for my own selfish interest or for my own ambition. It should be because I want a better Nigeria. 
So even the people that are asking for accountability, it's because they also want a better Nigeria. We want to put our hands in the plow. We want to do this together. Let us grow our nation together. So many people are moving away. Why? Because the nation doesn't seem like the best right now. It seems like a system that doesn't work. And then obviously there are other countries, other systems that are calling and, and you know pulling them in. But if we start to do the little bits, we start from accountability, which is which you know really takes nothing from you starting from accountability starting from transparency starting from doing what is needful starting from making sure that when you get money you put the money to good use you you you, you get the money and put it to the to what it was proposed for in the first place not diverting funds making sure that you're bringing amazing ideas, things that can push Nigeria forward. I'm sure even people who are abroad, who are in the diaspora, if Nigeria was working better, I'm sure most of them would want to come back. Likely chance that they would all want to come back. They're only out there because they feel like, okay, that system works better. So what we need to do is make sure that we're putting our hands in the plow, like I said, making sure that Nigeria is getting better so that all of our resources we'll be using them for our own good. So hopefully the Nigerian government, they start to understand why it is needful to be accountable, why it is needful to be transparent, and so that we, don't, we do not hear you know, news like this whereby our assets have been seized and they're calling us names. No, let us know what you've borrowed, let us know what you've used it for, and everybody is happy at the end of the day and make sure that you're using it to good use. That's also important. So if it's for a project, make sure the money goes into that project. All right, another top trending story says two officers dead, three injured in Abuja um, sheet um, police clash. Two police officers have been killed and three others are unconscious following a clash between the police and the members of the prescribed Islamic movement of Nigeria, IMN, popularly known as the Sheetahs in w the Wusi area of Abuja. Spokesperson federal of the capital Territory um, Police Command just Josephine Ade confirmed the attack which happened on Sunday, describing the attack as unprovoked while accusing the group of destroying three police vehicles. According to Ade, the IMN members attacked some personnel of the Nigerian police force attached to the FCT command at Wuse Junction by a traffic light. The statement also read the prescribed organization attacked the police checkpoint unprovoked, wielding machetes, improvised explosive devices, locally made bombs in bottles with kerosene and knives. While several arrests have been effected, the commissioner of police of the FCT, CP um, Bennett C. Igwe, PSC MNI, condemns the unprovoked attack on police officers. He promised to um, bring those involved to book. Our heart goes out to the people who have lost their lives, the family of the people who have lost their lives. It's quite um, unfortunate. And I'm wondering why, why are we still here? I know like everybody's angry, right? But you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't take it out on other people. These are people who went about their own day's job. These are people who are working hard to ensure that the lives and properties of Nigerians are being protected. And we go ahead to take their own lives it's quite unfortunate and, and it's, it's just sad. It's in, inhumane. We shouldn't even be talking about this. We shouldn't even be doing this. Why can't everybody just be, you know, normal, be sane in Nigeria and make sure that you're going about your own business, you're trying your best for your own life. But going ahead to, you know, kill other people, it's, it's quite sad because these are people's parents. This is a, one of those persons is definitely a brother to someone definitely a son to someone, definitely a husband to someone, definitely a father to someone. Now you don't know, you know, how, how much you've cut the income of those people or whatever they're supposed to be bringing home. You don't even, aside, the, aside money even, the love, knowing that you have your family member here, you can easily pick up your phone and call them. You can converse with them. You can spend time with them. That person is gone because their lives was cut short. It's quite sad and quite unfortunate. And I hope that these people, I hope that they get arrested. I hope that, you know, they're brought to books. I hope that they go to court. They face the justice system because you cannot kill and go scot-free. And it is important that this is not just swept under the carpet. I know, like, this is the, the, um, the Nigerian police and they would not even take, take it lightly. But it is important that we make 
an example of these people because you're seeing things happen like this day in, day out, and that's because we're not reacting the way we should be. If we were reacting the way we should be, I'm sure people would be scared to do it. And I think it's also important that we have proactive measures. These people now, it, it seems like the criminals are even more armed than the police itself. So what are we doing? And I know that um, you know, security takes a huge chunk of our budget. So how are we even using the money? How are we spending the money? Are we spending the money, you know, frivolously whereby people are just taking it for themselves or are we buying the, the the ammunition that the nigerian police actually need are we making sure that even the nigerian police is also as protected because they're also first they're a citizen before they even decided to to be part of any security agency so it's important that everybody um regardless of where you are whether you are um in the public service or whether you are just a civilian, um, it is important that everybody feels safe. So once again, my heart goes out to the family members of these people who have lost their lives, and we pray that their souls will rest in peace. Amen. Our final top training story says, Nigerian government declares Kotonou University certificates invalid, mass sack looms. Mass sack looms in Nigeria as the government has announced that all degree certificates from Kotonou University in Bene Republic issued between 2017 till date will be rendered invalid. The Minister of Education, Tahir Maman, disclosed this during a press conference with journalists in Abuja on Friday. This comes as the government also authorized um, a termination of appointments of employees with fake degrees acquired from the republics of Bene and Togo. The minister stressed that those measures were sanctioned in a recent meeting of the Federal Executive Council, which was presided over by President Bola Tinubu. According to him, the decision comes amid the controversy surrounding some Nigerians going to neighboring countries to get certificates. So in the final analysis, what the federal government approved is that the secretary to the government of the Federation will issue a circular to all employers, whether public or private, to fish out anybody with a certificate from these institutions. And the head of service has also been mandated to fish out from the public service anybody who is parading certificates from these institutions. Now, I know that um, I think some months ago, someone had come to say that he was able to get a certificate from one of the universities in Bene Republic. And I think he said he paid about 600,000 naira. And I think this is where that this whole thing, you know, stemmed from, because most of these institutions, they're like mushroom schools. They just set up and you can go and buy a certificate and you are out and you're like, yes, I can compete with people who actually went to school. And I think that's what the Minister of Education, um, you know, is trying to ensure that does, doesn't, trying to ensure doesn't happen in Nigeria. Because one thing he said was, how can you go to a university and spend maybe two months and you get a certificate, you come out with that, and you're trying to compete with people who have been in schools for four years some even five years, depending on the courses. But uh, the issue now is the people who really now went to school in these countries, that means what happened to their own certificates all the time that they've spent, you know, in university, making sure that they are able to come out with that certificate. What happens to them? I know it's a beautiful idea because at the end of the day, you want everybody to get whatever they have based on merit based on their own certification but we should also not um, throw away the baby with the bathwater right it is important that I, I would suggest, I mean, I think we should have like an appraisal. You should be able to fish out all of these schools and say, okay, these type of schools, they are not approved. I know that there are about five universities that are approved by the federal government from these countries, right? But even the people who, you know, probably really went to school, make sure that you can, there's, there should be some form of measure to be able to know that, yes, they really did. Because now, if you're going to blacklist almost all the schools, I don't know how many schools are in Benin Republic and Togo, but if you're going to blacklist all of them, how about all the people that went there? So now, do they have to start from ground zero? Do they have to start from stage one, or year one, or whatever they call it now? Um, it's, it's sad and it's quite unfortunate, but I know that it is a good thing because it's important that you go to school, you learn. And school, I, I think I need to buttress the fact that going to school or your education is not just about the certificate. It's about the things that you learned. And that's why you hear um, sayings like, 
you went to school, but the school did not pass through you. So it's important that as you go to the school, the school should also pass through you. It's not just saying, oh, I have a certificate at the end of the day, because you probably do not even know anything. If you were to defend that certificate today, will you be able to? And I think that's a question for everybody. If you are to defend your certificate right now, can you? Will you be able to? So it's not just saying, oh, I went to school and I have this degree. How are you implementing everything that you learned in school, you know, in your every, in your day to day life? Coming out, you know, into the into the labor market, how are you able to execute everything that you've learned? And that is the reason why education is important. And education, like I said, is not just having a certificate. It is making sure that you have that experience. You've learned everything. And it's not even just cramming as well, because a lot of times people just read to pass exams. And when the exam is done, that's it. I'm, I'm done with this course. I'm done, um, you know, with this program. I don't need it anymore. You're learning because you want to be able to compete with other people, you know, on a global scale. You want to have that better life for yourself. You want to be um, more knowledgeable. That's the reason why you're going to school, to gain that knowledge, not just saying, oh, I have a piece of paper that is my certificate. So it is important that if you're going to school, make sure you also research the school that you're going to. Make sure that the school, they have the adequate um, resources to help with your education. And most of the schools in Benin Republic and Togo, if we're being honest, they don't have that because they're just mushroom schools. They set up quickly, make sure that, you know, they can just give you a certificate as long as you pay the money, which is quite sad and unfortunate, and that's not how we should be. So I know that this is a good idea from the Minister of Education, but I feel like there should still be other metrics to ensure that people who really went to school, um, they can also still have their certificates as well. All right, that's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather. When we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.